Um, so first of all, uh, let me thank uh, the organizers, Romy and Mike, for inviting me to um, come to the to give a talk at this exciting workshop. So um, our group participated in both Grand Challenge and Kelp, and we have uh, learned a lot from um, the, both competitions or um, exercises. And so today I'll share our insights with you and also uh, how the Grand Challenge and Kelp can help each other. Uh, so the work was done by um, my um, postdoc, Xian Jin Xu, uh, who is sitting in the audience. So <laughs> you can stand up. And that's Xin Jin. Yeah, and also by Ray Dan, uh, who is um, at, so the Kelp part was done by Xian Jing and one of my PhD students, Ji Wei Ma. And Ji Wei and Ray are listen, uh, I think listening to this um, thing of the internet. Okay. So here's the outline. Why it doesn't show? Okay. So. Uh, so first, I'll talk about the methodologies we learned from the, actually, we, the methodology we developed through um, the participation of the Grand Challenge and KELP. And then we'll share with the results and what we learned. Um, so we thank uh, the D3R to pull, push us out of our, outside the, our comfortable zone. And so we have to develop new methods and also through both, we now have developed this fully automated server called Autoply. And so this can be used for predict protein mechanical interactions, not only for the grand challenge in Calc and for more general purposes. And uh, so basically this is the things, uh, so from grand challenge, we first developed methods and then we developed this Autoply and apply this to Kelp. And then the kelp serve as a large scale test. And also we are um, now using all the pipe for grand challenge. So what are the challenges uh, for this, these predictions? So we, uh, so here's a list for binding mode prediction. <clears throat> for binding mode prediction, first of all, the protein flexibility. Proteins are flexible. And if one, one so of course, one can use a flexible receptor docking. So unfortunately, right now, for currently, we still use rigid receptor pro, uh, docking. Uh, so hopefully, uh, as D3R goes on, we can develop new methods for uh, flexible protein um, docking. But if you use the a rigid protein flexible uh, receptor docking, then what structure you use is very important. <clears throat> so whether you're able to predict, use, try to uh, select the correct um, protein structure that's pretty close to the boundary one. And secondly, of course, is the scoring function, how to um, pick out the good, uh, the, the, correct prediction, uh, the correct mode. And for affinity ranking, that's even harder because uh, it has, it imposes a higher requirement on the scoring function. So in order to have a good binding mode prediction, your scoring function is good enough if you can predict the energy minimum. But in order to predict the affinity, you need to predict the whole energy landscape. And so the affinities and also ranking is dependent of your mode prediction. So here's the methodology. So in the when we did the first the uh, grand challenge, we developed um, this thing to search for an appropriate receptor structure for docking, uh, for re actually rigid receptor docking. So this is the st step one. And in this step one, this is the details. So we for a query ligand, we will compare the ligand similarity, uh, the significance of similarity with the receptor structures that we have found, you know, and compare with the ligands in those structures and pick out the big, the, the good ones. And that will be used for our further docking. So for docking, we have, there are two methods. One is template-based, which I'll explain later, and the other one is the real docking. And then we'll um, make the prediction of the modes and also binding affinities. So today, I think I'll focus on the um, binding, uh, binding mode prediction. 
And what if there's no good uh, uh, ligands in those structures? So none of them are similar to the input ones. Then we'll use the ensemble docking algorithm. So basically you use multiple structure, structures to do the docking. So step one is to search an appropriate uh, receptor structure for regions receptor docking. And first of all, we'll uh, download all the receptor compact structures in the protein data bank that contain this receptor. And then we'll perform this ligand similarity search. So this is a query ligand. We'll use omega to generate the conformations. And here are the structural database uh, for this receptor. So we'll compare each co um, conformer of the query ligand with the ligands in this structural database. And so we'll use the um, shafts, in, so which is published in this paper um, by another group, by a different group. So we'll use shafts to perform the similarity calculations. And the shafts composed, uh, is composed of well, two things. One is the shape um, to um, compare it, uh, comparison. So that's more like geometric similarity and also the pharmacophore feature. So that's more like the chemical similarity. So it's a combination of both. And then so we'll pick up the um, best ones. So the next thing, as I said, is the uh, use that structure, receptor structure to do the binding mode prediction. Uh, we have two methods. One is called template-based method. So this one is basically you, as I said before, you generate up to 500 conformers per for, uh, for each query ligand, you see omega from open eye. And then you superimpose each conformer with the, uh, the ligands in that structural database. And so calculate the shafts. And so then you just do the superimposition. And so uh, we, then the binding modes, and also we have rank them with the, uh, either with the shaft score and or with our IQ score. And the, for the top five ones, we need to do the MD simulations because usually there are lots of uh, atomic clashes. So that's hard. So you need to refine the modes. And the second type of method is the real docking. Um, so we uh, use autodoc Vena. Um, the good, the advantage of that is that you can do um, on the fly sampling of the flexible ligand conformers. And the receptor is rigid. And we modified the autodoc because the default autodoc can only output a few conformers. So here we modify them such that we can, uh, so we output, output up to 500 binding modes. And the little, as I said, ligand is fully flexible. And we'll then rescore them with um, the, our own scoring function because the scoring function in Autodoc is, is in Vina, it's pretty simple and uh, not, uh, so they need, uh, need a more sophisticated scoring function. So we use our IT score. And this is basically a statistical potential based uh, um, function and uh, it's, it's uh, trained based on the structure set of PDB by 2012. So we developed, developed this through the um, CISA and also uh, later on, we also, sometimes we can also, uh, if we have lots of ligand of data, we can also do this, uh, like develop a customized IT score with that specific protein system. And so here are the papers published um, for this IT score. And uh, here's the training set, PDB bind. So uh, I'll talk very briefly about the, uh, what this is. So basically it's, um, it's try, tries to extract the uh, atomic interaction parameters through statistics in the PDB, uh, so which is pretty common. Uh, so you basically in the PDB, if you see two atom types that occur very frequently, that's characterized by this occurrence density function, uh, density between two atom types, then that means the two atoms, the two atom types would have favorable interactions. And so assume they will follow this Boltzmann uh, distribution, then you can extract the atomic inter, uh, 
interaction parameters. Unfortunately, this formula involves a term that depends on something called reference state. So this, this reference state basically is a state in which all the atomic interactions uh, are zero. So there's no atomic interactions in this state. Um, so then you can calculate the, the uh, occurrence density as a reference. Unfortunately, in nature, we don't have such a state. So how to do this? So that's the big, uh, big hurdle for this statistical potential type of energy functions. So our group developed this uh, iterative method. Basically, uh, use, we use defined a function that's uh, very similar to um, the pairwise interactions based on statistical mechanical principles. So I, I think I just you can so you can so this is the um, the if you use a set of atomic interaction parameters, you can predict this G function. And then you can also calculate the G function from the known from the PDB. So that we assume this is the correct one. This is your predicted one. So if you use wrong atomic uh, parameters, you of course your G will be quite different from the the, uh, the true one. So that's delta G. Uh, so we'll use delta delta G to adjust our guess of the interaction parameters. Then step by step, we'll. Uh, they will be closer and closer. And when they are, the difference is below a cutoff, that means we are closing, we are getting close to the true atomic interaction parameters. So this is for grand challenge uh, number two. The so is for FXR, Barnes Soid X receptor. It consists of 36 compounds we uh, ask us to um, predict the binding mode. And so we, from um, searching the protein data bank, we found 26 um, FXR ligand complexes. And so we use the method I talked about before. We uh, then uh, do the prediction. For example, this FXR13, this is the, um, the query ligand. And we found PDB3 OKI. And the ligand OKI uh, is very similar to this FXR13. Basically, the, the things in the squares are identical. So we use the protein, the um, receptor that bound with three OXI as our receptor, and do the docking so or template-based uh, method either way. So you can see the prediction is pretty close. And here are the results of all those thirty-six compounds. So the green lines shows the predictions for the top five models. For the top five models, you can see that the, both the template-based and the real docking, they are very, they give pretty similar uh, results. And however, if you only consider about top one, those are the, uh, black, the blue ones. So the, of course, so the vertical axis is the RMSD, the, the lower, the better. So those are the compounds. Uh, so you can see that the um, template-based did a better job, which is not surprising. And so this is for top one. You can see th this is the ligand similarity. So if the for the chef's index, the ligand similarity range from zero to two. Zero means no similarity at all, and two means identical. So you can see that if it's greater than 1.5, the, even for top one, so that we can get very good, no matter what, uh, no, uh, we can get very good um, prediction. RMSD is pretty low. And, but if, um, the, if, if it's below 1.5, then um, they change. So for one, above 1 1.5, this is docking. The blue ones are docking and green ones are template-based. They are about the same, but uh, when it's below 1.5, um, that I think not um, the template base still did a slightly better job. So this is the summary for top five models. The two achieve similar pro performances for top one model. Then better performances are, is achieved by uh, the template based method. So for the grand challenge three. Um, 
the Kathapsen S. So yesterday, uh, Mel and uh, Nisa Sir talk, told us how challenging that is. So this is how it looked like. Uh, this is Kathapsen 1. Uh, this is the binding pocket. So we found out that half of the molecules are basically outside. So this is a crystal structure, but I guess if you solve the structure with NMR, very likely you'll get a pretty good, um, I, like a very, so all the models will be very similar inside the pocket, but outside they may be quite diverge. So maybe in the future when we evaluate the, the uh, RMSD, it's better to focus on the inside part rather than everything. So that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, for dog, so for uh, for talking is even harder. If you can see see more closely, this is a shallow pocket actually, a smaller one. There's a much bigger one which is connected together there. So that's why when we do docking, uh, we put and also these molecules are pretty big. So we put most of the molecules from is here, but all the also go all the way to there. So that's how we build. Uh, so the template base is okay. We can we can still get the good one, relatively good ones. But for the docking part, we fail. Uh, so what are the reasons we try to analyze why we fail? So probably because in this case, entropy plays an important role because half of the molecules are outside, and um, second, and also currently in our uh, energy functions, we do not explicitly consider about ligand conformational entropy. And the second thing that we actually, we were very, when we see this, we were very surprised. So we calculate the energy score using the crystal structures. And usually if you do this, you can get very, very, very good scores because of the good shape complementarity and good chemical com complementarity. But with these ones, Actually, our energy scores do not stand out at all. So maybe that also shows another sign of the importance of entropy. And also, through, um, there's another possibility is the interaction from the neighboring subunits. So it may be, uh, so, uh, as also Nisa said yesterday, so there's a, a near, uh, the subunit from the next crystal cell is nearby. Maybe that also affects the, um, the binding model a little. So here are the results, as I said before. So the, for the template base, if you look at top five, uh, we are, uh, um, so this is the mean and medium, so it's not too bad. Um, this is top one, but if you look at the docking, as I said, they totally fail. Okay. Um, so, well. Okay, so then we apply this to self to answer Greg and uh, John's questions. Uh, so basically, so it's very nice that self provides five protein structures. Uh, the LMCS, that's the, uh, the, uh, the largest uh, maximum common substructure. Uh, so basically, this one gives you the receptor bond with very similar ligands. And oppositely, you have this at smallest. SMC structure, so the least like um, vegan structure. And this is the toughest one, the APO structure without any vegan at all. And also to answer Greg's question, so this is to uh, whether the highest resolution give you the best results. And also later on, um, Cell uh, Calp also provide high tenimotal structures. Basically, this is very similar to LMSCS. It's just use a different way to calculate the is to calculate the tenim, uh, indexes. Um, so here we so another so Calp only provides a uh, top one uh, only asks us to sub, uh, pro, uh, to submit top one. Uh, so we found that the if LMSCS S and uh, high tenimoto, they give you the best results, not the other. So it's the, the most important thing is not the resolution, it's how the receptor you are given, uh, how close they are from, and how close it is from the real bond crystal structure. And we also use our own, um, provides our own protein, uh, so that's selected from the chefs 
that also gives you uh, actually a, a, the, one of the best structured results. So here's a wish list for the kelp. Maybe I can present that at the later one. So um, when we for the open discussion. Yes, to see. Okay, so here are the lessons we learned from D3R. The information extracted, I think also other people also mentioned this, the information extracted from the known protein ligand complex uh, may significantly improve the binomial prediction. So if a um, similar co-bound ligand is found, then template base, of course, uh, usually achieves the best results for top one, but for top five, there are uh, less it doesn't have too much advantage. Uh, so it's very important to, to uh, use the appropriate receptor structure, but if not, we found that it's better to use ensemble docking rather than rely on single protein structure docking. And um, yeah, so in that case, really ensemble docking outperform the single receptor docking. And so we developed this out a web server outply, which is available at this website. Um, so basically, if we only need the input from like ligand structure and the protein, uh, the protein, the protein, you can either give us the uniprot ID or you give us a structure. So and then we will do, so basically uh, we will, the, all of these things are automa automated. So we'll pick out, uh, pick, uh, find the best receptor structure to start with and then do the either do the template based docking will output up to 10 um, models and we'll do uh, selective docking selective docking means using the docking and uh, docking with the best receptor structure we we'll also output top 10 models we'll just give all of them to the users you and make the let them uh, decide how many they want to keep and if the ligand is not very close to the um, the, lig the ligands not in the PDB. Then we'll so the cutoff is 1.2. Then we'll use ensemble dogging and we'll uh, output the top 10 models. I think I'll skip those. Um, I think also skip. So conclusion: we develop an automated strategy for using for. Um, uh, using the information embedded from the known protein ligand complexes uh, to improve binomial prediction. And the method can not only use for grand challenge and kelp, but also actually even have wider applications. Um, the ligand um, similarity calculation method was employed to find, search for the closest receptor, the receptor structure that's closest to the bound protein and uh, use for prediction and the methods uh, are being put in this automated software called uh, Autoply. So future improvement that we learned from the uh, Grand Challenge 3 is that first of all, maybe we need to really think, consider about the entropy contribution from the uh, ligand conformation changes and also how to do recept, how to account for receptor flexibility on the fly. That's uh, also a big issue. Uh, so I want to thank people in my lab, Shenjing sitting in the audience. Um, and uh, so this is Ray, who is working on a ba basically the affinity prediction, uh, which I don't have time to talk about today. And Ji Wei is the student who does the, uh, also together with Shenjing work on the uh, uh, calc calculations. And I also thank OpenEye and NIH and other funding agencies. And also, I want to thank D3R team because you guys are so nice and try to always ask what we need and try to fit our needs. So that's really helpful. Then the 
space where you have similar. Yeah, for example, in the so, like the Grand Canyon too. Yeah, the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, so I will say um, um so accidentally, we need to go back to check some of the seven, but I believe that because if you use the template base, you are only having what you get is the same. You know, it's just one. Uh, it's just one path, right? Which which is you would be wrong because for number seven it's split. So for our team, we would be able to pick up both, but I should we should have to check that later. But very likely we should get both. And so the question is how you know how much the for the second the great one, how good that rank? Hopefully in the paper we can do that. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Mr.